Um, in this tutorial, I will show you how to create a constructor, how to overload your constructor, and how to use um, a constructor initializer for your class. Uh, to create a constructor, um, all you need to do is uh, use the same uh, name of the class of your class and uh, create a method or function. So. Uh, a constructor usually doesn't return um, any type so you just create a method with the same name as the class and you implement that method on your CPP file uh, just the way you did it on your add number function so we call it the class name because it doesn't return um, any type we don't specify a type in here and call the constructor function or method and usually a constructor is used to uh, initialize uh, data members that means uh, we can uh, give our data member here which as you can see right now it doesn't have an initial value so we can initialize or give it an initial value here I can make my data members zero if I want and b equals zero and in case somebody create an object and run the um, uh, in case if somebody creates the an object and and did not set a value to these two data members and compile the um, program and it won't print out some random number so in this case I initialized my data members to zero and if I can go to my main function and create add and print out the value it should be um, see out it should be zero so x dot add number and if I compile this and run it should give me zero and I can also actually uh, give it a default value like let's say four and B will be nine and I will just compile run and give me the value so that's what it did so in order actually um, to specify uh, this value or to specify or give an initial value um, when we create before creating the object uh, we can use actually an overloaded constructor uh, which is uh, a constructor that's going to take two parameters and uh, set the value of int a and b to that s specific value that we specified when we create an our object so the first constructor is called a default constructor or a zero constructor because it doesn't take any parameter. So I'm just going to overload this constructor by um, putting initial value, let's say A1 and uh, B1. And I have to specify int here. And I can implement that overloaded constructor just the way I did it for the uh, default constructor so a1 and int b1 and what I'm going to do is I will set the value of a to be a1 and the value of b to be b1 now when I create my object if I want to give it my a default um, uh, value I can do it like this so let's say 12 2 and 10 so when I compile this the compiler would specifically uh, look for the constructor signature which is the parameters which are the two parameters here int and it will call specifically this constructor instead of calling the default constructor so if I run this it will be 12 so I can also overload this constructor just overload one uh, parameter I mean one um, 
parameter I can also overload it by creating one parameter so I can do it this way I just only want to uh, give a value for my variable or data member a and a1 I can do that and um, a equals a1 I actually have to actually define it here first add int a1 and when I when I actually compile this program the um, the um, compiler will specifically call this constructor and initialize the value of the value of a and whatever value is left and the um, memory for int b let's say some gibberish value um, it will use that value add the number and print out the um, the return value so let me say I can compile this or it might even complain at this point it didn't complain it just um, compiled it so if I run it as you can see some gibberish value because uh, B does have actually an, an unknown value so um, but if I try to uh, create another constructor for let's say add int b1 uh, this is going to be um, a compiler error the reason is that because when you overload a constructor uh, we'll look at the signature which is the uh, parameter um, the parameter um, type so you cannot use two same uh, parameters and um, overload a constructor twice so it is best to use actually this method instead of initializing two constructor for two different um, uh, data members so let's say I can create this constructor and see what's going to happen um, I'm just gonna copy paste this and change this to B and this one to B and and if I try to um, actually in the first place it's not even gonna work um, let's say I can compile this but the compiler will not know which um, overloaded constructor to call so it will create an error so we have to take out this so it's best to use actually the original or the first overloaded constructor which specified the two parameters in one um, constructor okay delete this so uh, the next the next thing that I want to talk about is the constructor initializer uh, as you can see here when we create our object we actually um, specified a value to it and the object will be created the object will be created and the constructor member or method will be called and the value will not be actually initialized it's actually being modified because when you create the object the um, two data members will be set to the value or whatever value is in the uh, memory and when you run the constructor uh, those values will be uh, modified to the value the, to the values to the values that I specified in here and that's not efficient so in order to uh, keep it efficient we can use a constructor initializer which actually is going to initialize the value of the data member um, before actually creating the object so this is how we do it so we can specify the name of the variable and put the value that we want to specify and name of the variable again put the value that I want to specify and I can delete this part or you can do the same thing for this one you can specify by putting a colon here a will be a1 and b will be b1 and now when I compile my program uh, 
the uh, data members will be initialized and the object will be created. It's not going to make any uh, difference in this program because it's a very simple application. But when you write a large code, it will be more efficient.